So hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'd like to welcome you all to DigiGrad's webinar on email marketing headed by Charlotte Roy. Let me start off by introducing her. Charlotte is a self-motivated individual who loves acquiring new skills. She's managed and led high level accounts and grown revenue by 3x in the sales and marketing department of various organizations like Times of India, Netcore, and ByteDance. She's also been working with multiple individuals and institutions, training them on email marketing as she loves the subject and how it can be used as a great marketing weapon. Through her natural ability to influence others, she can inspire anyone who wants to learn email marketing and how it can help their business. During the course of this webinar, we would be covering the following topics. Basics of email marketing, tools and platforms for a successful email marketing campaign, successful case studies, how email marketing can fuel your inbound marketing strategy. After the presentation, we shall be taking any questions you may have. So feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. Without further ado, I would request Charlotte to start the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rakshika. This is uh, it's really nice to have that introduction from you. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, yes, I'm, I'm extremely passionate about the subject of uh, email marketing also because uh, it's one of the first subjects I took up or one of the first subjects I understood in the in the digital marketing space. And that's why uh, the interest levels for the subject. Uh, however, uh, uh, the idea is uh, not really to tell people or, you know, this is this is all, all uh, whatever I'll be sharing today is a lot of experience that I have seen the way email has grown the way um, you know email has uh, really built from where it is uh, a lot of people have different views about email uh, in today's time I think and, and the idea is somewhere to you know be um, uh, make it more interesting for the for the audience out here and that's that's really the idea uh, so um, uh, I would get started from there. Um, so I think let's let's just begin with this one uh, big question. I think which is daunting everybody for the longest time: uh, Is email marketing dead? I would love to take some uh, views here. I would I would like to keep this interactive instead of a one-way session. So uh, I I would love to have some views from people. If anybody, if you can type in, it's okay. If you can, if you want to unmute and speak, that's also all right. Uh, I think as the session goes by, we could definitely take questions from the chat box as well. Uh, so I just wanted to understand, so how do we actually grow our database in email marketing? And is there any specific day or uh, time of the day that we can look at to send out uh, an email? Uh, well, I think um, a database is one, one very, very important uh, uh, aspect of email marketing really uh, so it's important to have like a great database it's easily said mm -hmm. that you know you could actually buy databases you could actually uh, like you know uh, uh, take databases from xyz places and then you, know, you can still start an email campaign i would say that's that's committing suicide and a slow one <laughs> that's that's how i would really uh, say it to be so so to that first question of how do you build database never buy databases the first um, and and most uh, important uh, thing that i would i would like to bring out uh, you should not um, you should not do things which are uh, you should not not take permission from the end user who's actually getting your email right i mean ultimately you need subscribed uh, base of email uh, uh, email database that is available because that's legit uh, that's that's number one legit and along with that uh, obviously because somebody subscribed to you he wouldn't mind or she wouldn't mind getting an email from you uh, a lot of times we um, we kind of assume that kya farak padta hai matlab ki you know but then farak ye padta hai ki you know it'll end up into the spam of people people start marking you as spam and then you know the search engine starts uh, marking you as spam the email service provider starts marking you as spam and now then there is a bigger bigger trouble and problem that you're really uh, going to handle post with post this now uh, which is why uh, the recommendation is to stick on to uh, legit databases like uh, data uh, like collecting data or you know giving people um, uh, free stuff like great reads so you know um, one of those things that i totally believe that email does is it's very human right it's uh, you know we should never forget that on the other end there is a human being who's sitting and actually reading your stuff so it's very important to stay uh, to stay very very human in, in the process it should be a helpful email i mean if it does not help the user do anything uh, it does not make sense uh, email is supposed to be conversational I, I also feel that you know because it's a conversational very conversational platform 
uh, and it's a two-way communication that you can generally do on this platform. Uh, it's important that you give out information and questions and and point of views which are uh, which are useful to the uh, end user. And that's where um, you will actually help, or that's where you will actually start to build database or start to build your uh, data. Uh, I would say that you know a lot of email uh, databases are picked up from various places, but I think the great stuff is if you have your uh, website, um, you know, have like a lead form there, get people to fill up stuff, give them something in return, give them. So if you're an e-commerce site, give them a discount. If you're a, uh, if if you're a say a content site and uh, you know you could probably give out content or some kind of an infographic about certain kind of content that you created do something or give something of value to the end user and that's how you would uh, so that's that's actually pretty much the first part of the question for you uh, uh, i think the second part is what i'll what, what i'll cover somewhere in, in the due course uh, on the day and time uh, i know that's that's a question that really uh, haunts most marketers and, and that that really uh, is something that i have seen a lot a lot of marketers spend so much energy time trial and error uh, ab tests and you know the, the, the various things that they do there uh, but then having said that uh, the idea of this uh, this session really is to is to get people interested in this subject of email marketing and uh, get them to do do more email marketing because i personally feel uh, email is no nowhere going away so soon uh, it's 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 got to stay for long definitely so um so this is like some statistics which i felt that you know was some was was, was great to start with like um 3.9 million email users worldwide in 2019 and that's uh, and we are already like six months into 2020 so that number is already up by uh, this this uh, this this number i'm sure right uh, so 3.9 million users is a lot lot of users and if you see uh, the the trends here there is a 2017 to a projection of 2022 kind of trend and the kind of it's like an upward it's never been like a stagnant um, uh, trend you know an 8 to 10 percent incremental audience every year is getting added onto this platform and uh, be it be it the purge and the surge of e uh, smartphones that we've actually seen where you know the first thing that android makes us do is put in your email address right i mean that's that's where it all gets started so uh, that's the kind of number that we're talking of and this is huge uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of the uh, the, uh, the the volume itself you know it's, it's very very uh, there another interesting statistics which i thought was great to share with everybody was uh, the number of emails that are sent on a daily basis in 2019 alone there was 290 to 290 odd billion emails being sent and received each day now that's a staggering number right i mean this, this you would not see this happening uh, in any other uh, the kind of volumes the kind of uh, the kind of uh, times or how many how many people or how many um, emails are being sent out on a daily basis when you look at the second part of it i mean there's an estimation of of about 350 billion daily emails by around 2022 that's two years from now i mean uh, this this is i mean two years i really wouldn't even call it two years it's one and a half year now considering we're six months anyways into the year so this is this is the kind of number that we're seeing in terms of scale in terms of um, you know it's still there that people are still doing it there is uh, and this is this is all uh, this is all there for all of us to um, to you know be involved with and it's landing into all our inboxes every day so uh, uh, be it uh, be it actual, uh, you know, work emails or leisure emails, you would still have a lot of them uh, popping into your uh, inbox. Uh, another uh, important thing that I uh, feel uh, email really delivers is, is is it's not a very expensive platform, uh, which uh, which is pretty much evident by you know if you spend about one dollar on an email marketing campaign, it generates about forty two dollars uh, worth ROI, and that's uh, staggering again because um, I have not come across any other. Uh, digital medium which gives that kind of ROI you know uh, this is this is also because it's cheap right the uh, this cost of sending out an email is not so expensive and that really brings about the the major uh, change for you now from there when we look at it's a direct line of communication for to promote all your marketing uh, or other marketing strategies so if you have like a chatbot coming up you can put it up there you have like a new feature on something come up you can put it up uh, through an email if you have like a uh, if you had an app uh, or if you have a website and now you have an app coming up uh, you can start promoting it through an email just so many things that email can actually do uh, for you so it's like a it's like a second line of communication to 
uh, support all the other uh, uh, you know marketing uh, strategies or marketing uh, mediums that you end up using uh, well i think this is one question that a lot of lot of people have always asked that you know millennials they are matlab nahi unko mails bhej ke there's no point of sending out uh, emails to them uh, however you know uh, there's a study by adobe which says uh, E- millennials actually check and use their emails much more than any other age group and and this is again a staggering number you know uh, the problem with millennials is that they wouldn't uh, they would they would be checking and obviously using their emails more frequently and more but uh, the engagement levels may not be so much because you know um, attention spans <laughs> we we all we all would agree that uh, millennials are about attention spans and we um, we really have very short attention spans we want to be you know engaged with quicker things and newer things and all that and that's that's exactly what i'm saying here that uh, millennials do have so what we need to do to keep them engaged is basically keep engaging them with different kinds of content new stuff a lot more of things that that we keep pushing them to uh, you know uh, be on to the platform and be be available with us on that particular medium so emails not being used by millennials is not really something that i would uh, i would endorse anymore i used to believe it till a certain point myself but then not anymore i have seen uh, good content can actually make about a lot of difference from there um, brands creating human connect will succeed and i think uh, that's that's a major part of personalization and uh, uh, data segmentation that uh, we see now um, uh, you know i've seen a lot of brands who actually connect with people on a very very personal level so uh, more than just dear charlotte it is it is much more than that and in fact one of the case studies that i take you through further in this session i will actually uh, i will actually spend some time on what i mean by you know personalization and what i mean by creating that human connect uh, when it comes to uh, creating something which is memorable for the uh, it's, it's, it's something that is a delight uh, i would say uh, for for the customer so um, how many of us are still thinking whether it's a relevant medium or not i think i would like to take some views here you could definitely drop in your answers in the chat box yes lavanya yes. you said it's definitely definitely relevant so does priyanka okay perfect uh, i think uh, i'm i'm doing the job of getting people excited about this uh, particular uh, uh, this particular subject for sure uh, definitely like, uh, uh, honestly i mean um, um, the way uh, you know the transition on email uh, as an industry has been uh, it's been there for the longest longest time you know so um, uh, the funniest part is because it's been there for so so long uh we we kind of take it for granted <laughs> we we started taking it for granted and and that's really uh, the re- the reality of uh, email marketing now uh when i talk of uh, you know email being um, email will and always will remain a consistent uh, uh, consistent medium where you know one on one communication is possible to an inbox and now inbox is a very personal space right i mean it's not it's not like another common space or a social space which is available for everybody's visual view this is this is completely there in your inbox for your um for your need in uh, during your so it's it's at your time your place your convenience is when you're actually reading an email and that's exactly why i feel it's there to stay it's not going out anywhere anytime soon so um with that i'm actually coming into the case studies i'm going to spend some 10 or 15 minutes on some two or three case studies that i have uh, uh picked out here um uh, and and uh, probably uh, let's let's look at some uh, some of these so this is one of my favorite also because i've worked in uh, this this campaign myself um i i uh, i was working with netcore netcore is another uh, email service provider uh, and also an automation uh, uh, automation platform today and uh, you know when we were doing this uh, i think one of those things that swiggy was very clear on that you know i have so much data why shouldn't i leverage the data and uh, this is a brilliant example of um, how uh, great personalization can actually lead to customer delight and when i'm saying this i'm i'm uh, i totally mean it like in every way because uh, you look at the you look at the uh, uh, you know the, the the template of the email right it says swiggy appraisal report 2018 19 so the last year so it, it it landed in my inbox on the 5th or 6th of april which is typically the time when we all are all are awaiting our appraisals and you know waiting for those uh, those letters to come out and uh, it 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 had something like uh, your performance for the financial year 2018 and 19 was evaluated and considered for this year's appraisal 
you've been assessed based on your overall performance in five key responsibility areas and so on and so forth and then they had like these five things about you know your appetite for success your um, your efficiency hour and you know um, things that how much how much money you ended up saving all of those things that that were really spelled out there and um, i was um, i i wouldn't be say i wouldn't be lying if i'm saying that you know i was i was like awed by the way these guys are actually uh, uh, you know send out this content to me i mean it was so personal it was it was exactly the number of orders that i had placed it was exactly and you know i had uh, they actually ended up giving me like a number of i saved about um, 2000 or 3000 bucks on food uh, that year and that was like a brilliant number to have right i mean uh, imagine as a as a user right i mean that's what when you're buying uh, a food from one of these uh, either swiggy or zomato or any of the places you really look at discounts and you really look at what kind of uh, what's the best deals possible right and you know they ensured that this report actually showed me that and this is exactly the power of personalization and segmentation that we are talking of we saw some skyrocketing open rates uh, some things that i can't uh, give out openly really but uh, some very good open rates like uh, much much better than the normal uh, open rates that you would see some some great growth in cdrs and that's what we are talking of um, uh, when it comes to you know personalization and segmentation so if you if you are reaching your audience with the right kind of content on a regular regular basis i think the chances that your email marketing campaigns will be as successful is is not like something that i would say that no this is not going to be the case or you know i would really say that you know i've seen success coming in for these brands and and they've really and i'm like this is an absolute um, uh, absolute uh, absolute brand in the food tech space but there are a lot more lot other brands that i would say uh, who also have seen this kind of success uh, because of personalization and uh, segmentation that they've done another uh, another thing uh, or another brand that uh, i i saw some great uh, stuff on uh, while this is not something that i worked on personally but uh, this is this is another uh, brand now if you see that they had actually started up with a live chat feature on their uh, website right uh, uh, and and you know this is this is exactly what this entire um, uh, page would look like now um, email promoting a live chat so you know one of those points that we said that you know it is a great tool that complements your other marketing activities and this is exactly what i mean uh, you can actually promote stuff uh, make it make it very easy for people to use you can actually have like um, it, it's like talking to people right it's like it's like talking to people and telling them that uh, how can you use something much better than what you were doing uh, till then and this is exactly what we are uh, talking of here i mean got a question get an answer through chat i mean that's that's how simple the subject line was and this is exactly what they they put together Uh, very clean very crisp exactly if you were looking at uh, you know if it's, if it's the brand i mean it's a great way to bring uh, bring in brand uh, recall for a lot of uh, times you know it's not they're not promoting anything they're not selling anything to you they're just saying that come on to your site but you know we made our we made the experience much more easier for you to uh, continue coming back to us for and and that's what they promoted here and uh, it's it's come out brilliantly again another uh, uh, campaign one of my favorites actually uh, mintra is i think all of us uh, spend some time uh, uh, a lot of us spend some time at least uh, in the day and you know uh, i had put a lot of things in my wish list and i uh, realized that you know this wish list is something that uh, so they really created a cool uh, thing with you know this uh, moving gif at the top that's still on your uh, still on your mind mintra is still on your mind so you know if you read it that way it's it's almost recalling your oh yeah i had put some things in my wish list did it really uh, is it really there it's it's clear indication of the things that i had put out right uh, so i was looking at a white color canvas and you know there were options that i had actually uh, put onto my wish list i said okay maybe i'll buy i'll not buy you know i was contemplating all of that and um, they had all those options out there so they gave me the products that i had actually put in my wish list so this is a classic case of cart abandonment slash uh, you know your uh, uh, product being uh, you're contemplating it but you've not got it it's a classic case of that now email works brilliantly at such places like uh, ecom where wherever you have uh, i'm sure um, every time you log into amazon you put like five things in your uh, basket and then you go out and you decide that oh this did not uh, i did not buy this because it seems to be an expensive deal and then you put it there and it hangs out there and then you know a couple of days later you will have amazon again pinging you did you miss something did you really not uh, come back and you know buy something and that's the kind of stuff that i'm i'm talking of that email can do for you 
I mean, it's cheap, right? It's not like a very expensive medium. Sending out like one email is not going to be too expensive. So, which on a regular, regular basis is is uh, uh, I think Ekta has raised her hand. Uh, Rakshika, can you please? Uh... Sure. Uh, I think uh, we have a question from Shireen. Sure. Uh, don't you think that email marketing can irritate people and be a sent as spam? How does it impact my brand? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, I, I think I'm going to go back to that first point really um, that I spoke on that you know email marketing is unfortunately treated as spam because a lot of us marketers uh, send it out as spam. It's it's a lot of sp spamming that we end up doing, uh, and we end up sending out uh, emails that are not relevant to not relevant people. Uh, I think the the key really remains to you know great uh, segmentations that you can create out of your own database. So knowing your database, uh, uh, like churning it down, bringing it into uh, you, I would say, uh, uh, making it into smaller chunks of audiences, and you know, uh, so a loyalty base, a, a base which is uh, which is just new, who's just come in. So you know, we end up actually sending out the same communication to everybody. We never send out communication which is specific to uh, you know an audience set we, we end up uh, doing like every every communication is going out just you know from from uh, it's like you know you open your inbox at any point of the day you will have like 1500 emails that are lying there uh, because uh, all the brands thought it was relevant to send it out to you at that particular day but again uh, how many of those emails do you actually open why do you open them you open them because you know something connected somewhere right something one of those emails that you're opening is something that is really connecting with you and um, I think as brands, the, the biggest thing for you to do is, um, you know, remember that there's a person on the other side and you need to know and understand and decode that person in a certain way uh, to actually have this kind of, uh, uh, have a conversation. It's a conversation through a technology ultimately, right? It's, it's one technology that is enabling some conversation between people. And if, and if you use it that way, I think, um, I think, I, I hope I've answered that question for me. Yes. Uh, so we also have another question from Vandana. Sure. So Vandana has a question. Uh, she says, when is the point where it stops becoming a question of recall and pushes people to the point where they unsubscribe from the content? Huh. That, that's, that's an interesting question. Thank you for that, Vandana. I think, uh, you know, the, the point where I have seen a lot of, uh, lot of brands think of it as your own right when you start looking at emails uh, think of how many times would you mind certain brands reaching out to you versus another brand who would like spam you day in day out and then one 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 day you just decide okay enough of this let's just unsubscribe think of it that way so uh, there's no number as you know you should have like five emails sent in so many days or, or there's no there's no great number like that because it's industry to industry it's um, it's it's uh, you know product to product it's service to service that this all will differ but ideally uh, if you if you uh, want to really be relevant to people i think one email a day is more than enough i don't think uh, mm -hmm. i mean imagine it's like stalking people right i mean uh, what would a stalker do a stalker would reach out to you every day, every point in uh, the, the, the simplest um, uh, th way I could put it really. I mean, a stalker would actually reach out to you so much that you would be like, why is this person stalking me? You know, that's that's when you start to think that he's stalking you because, you know, there's so many, so many uh, conversations that suddenly has gotten to. And I think uh, that's uh, really the differentiation that you, you would need to bring about it as a brand. Uh, you want to be relevant. So you need to be creating stories which are relevant to them. So email... Uh, in fact, email enables you to give the stories for weeks. It's not like, you know, you can do it in one day. You can do it in like multiple weeks. I think that's the beauty of it. So the recommendation that like don't overdo it for your uh, customer to feel that, oh, you know, it's like too much of uh, information that's flowing into me. And, you know, I, I don't think I need this, this kind of information. And that would come with experience. That will not be like day one, you'll realize that, you know, this is what you want to do. And this is what your audience wants to read. But then looking at your data on a regular basis in itself, I think uh, can do a lot of trick. Sure. Thank you. We hope that answers your question, Vanna. Uh, we have a couple of more questions uh, as well. We could probably take that towards the end of the session. Would that be all sure, right? Sure, sure. I think uh, more or less I'm towards the end of it. Uh, I, sure. I'm, looking at, um, I'm looking at some top tools uh, on email marketing that uh, sure. I have personally also worked on. So uh, MailChimp, I think, 
a, a favorite for a lot of lot of people. I I I've, I've known a lot of people actually use Mailchimp. Uh, my personal favorite out of this list really is HubSpot. I really love their uh, interface, their the ease at in which you can do stuff. Uh, Netcore Smartech again, uh, it's very Indian, uh, uh, very Indian tool. Uh, Salesforce Powerdot, uh, uh, it's an it's actually a marketing automation tool. Both uh, Smartech and uh, Powerdot, uh, both are automation tools. In fact, Mailchimp also has an automation angle to it. So um, uh, when when we go into the details of email marketing, you would realize that you know today you don't need to actually send out emails uh, physically every day, and you know you could actually churn and and plan an entire journey for people who are in different um, life cycles in in your pro in your journey or product. So you know there are two things that uh, generally I would say that life cycle segments and bio persona segments. These are two things that I would generally uh, you know emphasize on when when so these are the different tools that are available to use i mean personally like i told you hubspot is one of the favorites uh, for the ease of use um, while the others also have their own benefits and you know uh, obviously what do you want to do and and obviously in terms of uh, uh, the the money that you end up spending that's also something that will decide with which of them you would want to uh, be using so uh, I think from there we're moving on to the last segment really um, uh, before we take the questions. Uh, this is this is the quiz time. I really uh, uh, I really want some answers uh, uh, from people. So uh, any idea on you know when was the first email that was sent out? Any any anybody has any ideas? Like while I know Google can give you that answer, but <laughs> it's it's uh, it's good to actually uh, throw this question out because you know it's good to know the history of something that we're really understanding, right? Absolutely. Anybody has any answers? I don't need an exact uh, date or a date or uh, year. I don't mind like a range also. Any guesses? Shailesh says it, it's uh, in the 1970s. Yes, it is. It is yeah. brilliant. That that's nice. That is, uh, that's I think one of the first times that I've saw, I've actually heard somebody uh, come up with the right answer. Yes, uh, and which is why when I started off, I said that you know this this medium has been there for really really long. Like it's it's almost like now we are in 2020. We're talking about 50 years that you know this this medium has existed. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Hotmail was obviously uh, uh, that made us more used to the idea of email as such, which was in the 90s. But even then, we are talking of 30 years of it being existing, you know. And uh, it's been as uh, it's been one of the oldest digital mediums, I would say. Uh, and and uh, so that's that's one of the things. Um, what's the other, this? This is another question. Uh, how does email marketing fuel your overall inbound strategy? Uh, any any thoughts on that? Any views on that? Shailesh again says that uh, it generates qualified leads. Mm. Uh, close. Uh, I, I I think I would still I I would still give that away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to him with uh, this, <laughs> that email marketing syncs so closely with your CRM that um, you know it, it becomes a great part of your inbound strategy and um, uh, and you know when I'm talking CRM it's actually all of these tools that I actually showed you all of these tools somewhere um, have like a contact database section which allows you to feed in the database on a regular basis or sync it directly with your CRM and you know keep doing this exchange of information so if somebody is open uh, your email, your database would know, and you know you would you you would be able to bucket them into different groups and different um, uh, segments, and that's exactly what it does, and that is why it's a great uh, uh, medium uh, as such. The the last question uh, really, without dash for your email, um, sorry, I uh, without dash for your email, you will not know if your emails are successful or not. What do you think we should have for, to know if your emails are successful or not? Any views? Um, Vandana says feedback, I think. Feedback. Yeah, <laughs> feedback, okay. Any other views? I 
I'm going to give away the answer. It's goals. It's basically the goals that we need to set up. Uh, so we need to be clear of what we want to achieve in that email campaign. You know, if you're, if you're looking at building recall, then so be it. We're building recall. If you're, if you're actually wanting people to, you know, go onto a landing page and, you know, fill up a form, uh, we, we, need to, we need to have that extremely clear right in the beginning of the campaign. And that really brings about the clarity in doing a campaign at uh, length and in, in, in detail, really. So um, that really brings me to this part of it, which is questions. I'm sure there are a lot of questions uh, yeah. uh, from people. Yeah. So Priyanka actually says that she is an Ayurveda doctor and a health coach, and she's looking to connect uh, with her case, uh, clients and patients via email marketing. So what would be a good way? So I think, um, Priyanka, thank you so much for that question. Um, I think one, uh, one of those things that uh, uh, a lot of people would say at a point that, you know, pharma, healthcare, email marketing, uh, well, <laughs> but uh, I've worked, um, I've worked very closely with Abbott, with uh, Pfizer. They use email marketing very, very extensively. And uh, when I say extensively, it is right from reaching out to their doctors to their patients that they, uh, you know, want to keep in touch with. So it could be a varied, varied um, style of communication. So depending on, you know, what information you want to give out to people. So like I said, you know, treat like the person in front of that computer watching this particular uh, email of yours is a human being. And, and because he's a human being, he's going to have he's going to need something out of this email. And if it is a useful information that you can provide on a regular basis. So, you know, one thing that I've seen a lot of brands do is starting up with newsletters. So on a regular basis, send out information uh, or monthly basis, you could send out like a informational uh, content that you uh, start with. And that's, that's like a beginning for you. Right. And then build onto your database, you would know some intelligence about these guys that, you know, how many of them are actually opening your email, how many of them are actually clicking onto your email, doing things about it. So that's generally the journey that I would uh, recommend. So, uh, in fact, I could think of so many different ways, but I think we, we'll, we'll eat up all the hours uh, that we, all, all the next few minutes that we have here. So, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so we have a question from Ashish. Uh, inbox has been already cluttered with thousands of unread mails. How do you stand out? Tools you recommend for customized content based on prefer preferences? Okay, so um, I think um, I think the first part of the question, which which really is uh, you know the clutter. Yes, there's there's too much clutter. I agree. Uh, that's also uh, uh, you know so while there is a lot of email channels that are there. Uh, Gmail, which pretty much dominates that uh, that space of email uh, uh, inbox, as such, uh, you would see a lot of lot of brands, uh, you know, uh, trying to stand out with a lot of content. Which is so, you know, the first thing that generally people actually go on to is the subject line, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. that's the reason why somebody would open an email, also. So you know, have like a powerful subject line is is the way I would say. Like have things or uh, speak of things which are um, not too long, not too verbose. But, you know, um, very, very action oriented, like um, uh, I'm very relevant. Like, look at the Swiggy thing, right? It said that your appraisal for uh, your performance appraisal for 2018, 19. And the timing was so apt. The timing was so apt that, I mean, even if I had not worked on the campaign, I think I would have opened the, uh, opened the email, right? Because it, it just made more relevant sense to me. And a lot of times, you know, when we are, when we're looking at information, we, while Google does help get us a lot of information but you know when you're looking at certain kind of information we still go back to email to check you know whether this kind of communication was there or there is there is um, uh, there is something that we can draw out of this so uh, i would say that clutter yes but then we can break clutter with subject lines uh, on platforms and tools for uh, content is that the second part sorry i i don't remember what was the second part yes uh, so ashish would like to know uh, which are the tools that he can use to customize preferences customize preferences so all of these tools that email tools that are available they have their own uh, you know uh, intelligence uh, built in so there is a lot of intelligence that you get from the tools that you start using when you start using them you could actually be, uh, you would be um, 
I think the basic two for Sona is like I was telling you off. So one is life a life cycle segment. So basis on which part of the life life cycle this person or this uh, this database or this ID is in, you can actually segment. And the second being uh, your bio persona. That that's the other thing that would uh, help. I hope that answers your question, Ashish. Yes. Uh, so we have a question from Ekta. Uh, Ekta says that. Uh, the mails we get that we get from the cookies that are stored in our browser, uh, she would like to know more about these cookies and how she could help uh, connect with students as she's a teacher via these cookies. So, um, so on emails, um, so the, the I don't know. I, I think these are two separate questions, really. Uh, Rakhita, yes. Because when, yes. when I think of it, uh, it's like uh, cookies is something that you will use to retarget, and you know yes. uh, there is the other part which is to reach out to your students. So re retargeting through multiple multiple mediums, and uh, uh, so uh, there's, there's email retargeting possible. There's social media retargeting that's possible. There are multiple retargeting uh, mechanisms that that are available. Automation yeah. enables so email automations also enable retargeting. So that's that's one part of it. While all of these platforms allow you to do uh, all of this. Uh, the other part is reaching out to students as a trainer, as a teacher, uh, reaching out to students on a regular basis. Again, um, you know, have like a calendar of things. So it could be a reminder for classes uh, that, you know, you have class coming up on so-and-so date uh, and, you know, you would want to prepare for so-and-so and this is the kind of link that you would want them to go to and read up before they come into the class if that's that's what it, what it is. So you're giving value along with just sending out an information. Um, it could be as much as um, it could be as much as you know sending out a, a a fresh email to somebody who's just thinking of whether to join your class or not. You know, it could be somebody like that as well. Now, when you're talking of somebody like that, you need to give the person things that he or she would be looking for. Uh, typically, when you start looking for a course, what is it that you start to think of? Uh, you start to think of you know the different uh, you know how does it help whether it has career perspective you know you start to think that oh will I get a job after this and you know all of those things right I mean so this um, there's a lot of combination that really works around uh, both of this so I I would recommend highly that you know uh, you create like segments of audience in your own database if it's if it's a small database it's okay uh, even then segmentation is always a great idea you may not have everybody on the same page. Uh, not everybody is going to be a first timer. Some people would be with you for long enough. Uh, so you would want to talk to them in a different language. So I think that's that's typically how you would want to uh, draft out your journey uh, with them. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I think we can just take a couple of more questions. Uh, so we have another question from Mandana. Uh, she says, what are the first steps that someone interested in digital marketing should look at in terms of topics to be aware of or further education or job prospects, etc. Hmm. <laughs> because yeah, because I am doing email marketing, I think I'm going to yes. endorse that. <laughs> well, I think uh, it's it's simpler and it's easier to execute. Also, that's also one of the reasons that I uh, uh, that I really and and pretty much anybody can do it themselves. It's like. Uh, you know, you just need to uh, learn the tool a little and, you know, you need to know some of those basics to be uh, uh, drafting out a proper email campaign. And I think uh, that's uh, that's the simplicity of it. And that's why I would endorse, uh, uh, you know, email uh, to begin with. But then, uh, you know, you would want to know all the others, right? I mean, today, uh, you don't know, you, you obviously need to find out where your audience is. Now, email is brilliant when you know that, you know, you have this database of people that is already existing with you. You Definitely. know that you know there is an email address that exists with you. You know some intelligence about this person that he bought the he bought say X Y Z from you the uh, a year back, and then he did not buy anything at all. So you know you you would have some experience of of this email ID because this email ID is that one person that we're talking of. Versus when I'm when I'm talking of uh, in another situation scenario, uh, I, I'm just thinking that you know email uh, uh, like social media would be uh, you know you would be able to segment you would be able to do a lot of lot of things there. Um, I'm sure uh, 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 search also makes you uh, you know do a lot lot of things. Now, um, uh, which of the platforms really works is where exactly your audience would be. I would say it, it's a combination of it, it it all. It can never be one platform over the other. I mean, while I would love to say that email is the best, but uh, I, I really restrain from saying that because um, I feel it's a combination. It's never going to be one platform over the other. It's, it's a combination of all of this that works uh, brilliantly for an email, uh, for, a, for, for a campaign to be successful in, in total. Absolutely. Uh, so we have, I think we can take one more question. Uh, 
from Radhika. Uh, yeah. She says she's a sub broker of share market and she'd like to know how she can increase her sales via email marketing. A lot of stuff to do. In fact, uh, in fact, broking is, I think, one of those places which. Uh, so I think uh, one of those things that you can immediately start with is giving people tips about you know how they can become uh, how they can invest more wisely. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that's 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 like the first thing that comes to my mind right now. I'm sure there's a lot of other tools and so. Um, so I think what I really uh, would give her to you, Radhika, is you need to uh, because you understand your space so well. Create a series of different content that you would want to actually start promoting, and use them for different kinds of communication. It mean n- need not be just email. That I would say. I would say it would it could be a combination of all the other platforms. It could be social media. You using some things. It could be um, you know email where you're giving out like five tips on uh, how to uh, stay sane with your investment plans. This season, now that we are all working from home, and you know we have situations like we are in, I think um, that's the kind of stuff that I would recommend you to uh, pick up. That that could be a beginning, really. Sure, that sounds great. I hope this answers her question as well. Yes. And uh, so, I think with that we'll be uh, wrapping up the session. Uh, so thank you all for participating in this session and thank you so much Shalit for uh, all the wonderful insights that you've given us about email marketing. Thank you so much. I yeah. really look forward to uh, having more conversations with you. You guys could connect with me sure. at LinkedIn and we look sure. forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I just request uh, the audience to fill in the feedback form that we have actually. So I'm just going to drop the link. Uh, we at DigiGrad also have a lot of courses about digital marketing in general as well. Uh, so you could definitely go through our website to uh, get a better understanding. We, I'm just trying, dropping the website link as well. So thank you so much for today, Shalit, and thank you, thank everyone. You so Hope you have a great time.